this is Distant Replay. Only two episodes left in Last Chance You. This is episode seven we're talking about here on Distant Replay. We're getting close to the finale, which we're all looking forward to. I'm invested. I'm pumped. But I know, I know what's around the corner. When will we find out, Mike? Will we find out this episode or next episode? Uh, That's what we were wondering about. So episode seven is here. And so there's a few things to get in on this episode. I think first off, let's start with uh, with Coach Hunter, who's in the wheelchair. We he's one he's the one coach we hadn't learned a whole lot about throughout this, and they finally save a, a, a little bit of a nugget f- on him until this episode, and that's kind of how we start. We see him out recruiting because he is he's so tapped into the community, uh, reaches out to, to a lot of the, the guys, kind of knows the the scene is is really in on a lot of dudes, and that's that's his primary role on this team. But it kind of crazy the way that all happened, you know, how he ended up in a wheelchair, because I didn't really, it wasn't super clear to me how it happened, but was he playing basketball with someone and he got landed on by just a large teammate? No, I think they were like fooling around wrestling just, just, or just something. Just playing? Yeah, playing around. And I guess he said some guy who was like a, this gigantic guy. Right. Who came down the wrong way on him and, uh, and paralyzed him. Crazy story to hear that. But I love the you know the kind of the way he's come around since then, and, and you know a lot of these are you know kind of redemption stories, you know not only players but for coaches too. You know we coach Rob a little bit, um, coach Mosley, you know trying to win and and uh, and get on top of of the junior college ranks. But you know here he's the guy that went home and was basically I mean like anybody that age, Mike. If 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 either one of us suffered that you know in college, you know he was he was playing basketball. He was a basketball player. I don't know how much of a future he would have the game, but in terms of as, a, as an athlete, but if that happens to any of us, I mean, you think your life's over, right? I mean, that's that's kind of where you go. But somebody came and pulled him out, and said, "Hey, I want you to come help us coach." Yeah, and look, people like that giving you a chance or believing in you sometimes makes all the difference in the world, you know. And it seems like for Ken, for Ken Hunter, you know, that's he seems like he's trying to do that, you know, in the same way, like trying to do that for these kids, like show them that someone believes in them to give them an opportunity to you know to reach their goals. You know, and, and it went through how he was a, he was a good player at Trade Tech, L.A. Trade Tech, who's one of the opponents. Yeah. Um, for you know, one of the opponents this season for East L.A. and how that's where he coached for like what f- almost 15 years or something like that. Yeah. And then that's when he he was looking for a new job a new job, and Mosley was like, "Look, this guy's like a dynamite recruiter. We need to tap in." It seemed like Mosley, you know, is so focused on coaching the team. That he just checks in with Hunter every once in a while, like, "Hey, are we good with recruiting?" Yeah. You know, Hunter says yes, and then like Mosley's like, "Oh, okay, no problem." You yeah. know, it's great. Like, he trusts him that much. It. Yeah, yeah. We saw like a little, a little tidbit of that, little clip of that, how that kind of interaction works. But you know, they always do a good. They've done a good job in the series of kind of setting up the characters when it when it mattered. And we kind of saw that here because Joe, of course, Joe has another blow up. Mike, big surprise, right? In practice, when coach is getting on him. And I, and I get both sides of it. Like I, the more we watch, the more I get Joe's competitive spirit, his passion for the game, right? Combined with the fact that he knows, like this is it. He's got he his, his windows is closing quickly. But I mean, look, coach pointed out, man, your attitude. You have to be the leader. You set the tone. And if you go off the rails or you have a bad attitude, that's going to spill over everybody else. We need you focus. I don't care if the team's playing bad. You, it's your job to pick them up, right, and lead. Of course, he stum- storms off to the locker room and is, is ready to go home again. But we see Coach Hunter kind of play his role and come in there as a level-headed guy that who, who who connects with these guys on a different level than the other coaches. Yeah, and that's that's really where his value is to this program. I mean, he, you see how he's very to the point, very honest with the players, and you know, not in like a bugging kind of way or annoying kind of way. Very direct, tells them what they need to hear. You know, lets them blow off steam if they need to, and then all right, let's get back to business. You know. And I think he develops the relationship with these kids from the recruiting process, you know, you know, and then builds on it once they become members of the program. But these three kind of little segments they've done on each coach in three different episodes, I thought were very well done. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, so we see Joe, they, they get it back on the court. And I do love jokes. He wills he wills coach back out there and puts him next to the the other college coaches that are there in attendance watching this, by the way. Was it Weber State and uh, Loyola Marymount, I think, were yep, in yep. there? So, I mean, two decent programs, and they're watching this, and Joe, Joe walks off the court. 
Um, you just shake your head. You're like, come on, man, get it together. It's funny. They showed, they showed him leaving the court and then they'd show the coach's <laughs> reaction, you know, like who knows if the coaches were looking, you know, the way they edited, who knows if the coaches were looking at Joe or they were just looking out at the game. Right. You know what I mean? But it was just funny the way they edited it. How many times do you think those guys see stuff like this though? At junior college level, at practice. junior college level, they, they probably are looking, they probably expect it and surprised when it doesn't happen. Yeah. They're just kind of looking, what, what is this guy's upside? You know? And if he's got the other the other tools, if he's got a good head and and a uh, competitive guy, then like that's that's great. But we'll see we'll see what his ceiling is and figure it out. And Joe's got a high one. Um, that's what we that's what we know for sure through throughout this documentary and this docu series on these guys. So the other cool thing about this episode that was kind of a, a a new turn of events or at least a new story for us was Deshaun's background and walking on a UTEP. And I'm surprised like this didn't come out earlier interested that this this came out as late as it did and i didn't really get the whole timeline um until this thing came out so he walked on at utah went out there to compete earn a spot seemed to be in pretty good spot by the way he's playing for tim floyd by the way so you know yeah got a great coach. news news flash to to me like he you didn't know, know he was I, there huh i had no idea no. <laughs> uh, last time i knew tim floyd was supposed to replace phil jackson right and then you know uh 20 years later he's at utah for some reason yeah so you, i mean if you're on tim floyd's good side i mean that's you're in a pretty good spot, and it seemed, according to Hyler, that you know he was in line for for uh, for a scholarship, and and was right there on the cusp. And then some turnover in the administration. AD didn't want to sign the the financial aid for whatever reason. I'm kind of curious how that how that played out. I feel like there's more to that story, Mike, than we got. But either way, the scholarship money was gone. Financial aid was it dried up, and he had to return home. And basically looked at it as like a wasted opportunity because he put in all that time and sacrificed you know, all the extra hours in the gym to earn that scholarship, and now he's back to square one. Yeah, I think it was. And it was that right around the same time when his mom was sick? Right, and that's so what I, I didn't did, realize. I guess I didn't realize either that you know he he went there, that kind of fell apart, and then both of his parents died after that, which is just. I mean, I knew that it was pretty recent, but I didn't realize it was essentially over the course of the the, the year leading up to the show. Yeah, and and, and give him credit, like. Make no mistake about it. His goal is to get a Division One scholarship. Like I got the feeling like he doesn't even particularly care where, but you know, high high as high level program as possible. But you know, that's his goal because he he kind of tasted what it felt like. You know, he felt that he was right on the cusp of it, and give him credit for not giving up and trying trying to get back to that point. But that's got to be, I mean, that's something you can't predict. You know, you or you you don't have any say in or you don't have any control over. But that's got to be tough. Never mind all the other stuff he went through. Yeah, that, what a what a I mean, you definitely feel for Hyler more, and you understand kind of where he comes from in a lot of these things when he has a a bit of a worse a bad attitude because he's just dealing with so much. That, I mean, there's no there's no doubt about it. But he comes up big uh, in this episode, as we would expect, because we finally get to the playoffs. Mike, we're back to the playoffs. Uh, Ten seed Allen Hancock, what a name, right? You're gonna all, you're gonna remember all these JUCOs, aren't you? L.A. Trade Tech, Rio Hondo. Saddleback, that, Alan yeah. Hancock. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I told you, man, I'm, I'm going on a big Goog Fest when this is done. <laughs> and I'm going to check out the California, you know, Juco uh, division. Yeah, I'm going to be invested next season to see how things are going. So, 10 seed, Alan Hancock. So, we have a little bit of an upset story here. But a, a game in which, you know, the team feels pretty confident about coming in. But Alan Hancock is playing tough. Um, we even see the, you know, in the scouting report, they – they came back from 19 down, scored 56 in the second half in their previous game, went to overtime and won that one. So, you know, they're, they're a team that can can take off in a hurry. And this this Mike is a back and forth game, and and you get the sense that that things are not in good shape with this team, and this could be the end of the road for Coach Mosley and this East LA team. They're down nine in the second half to this team, and things aren't going particularly well. You know, they're they're just not overall not playing that well. Anybody, honestly, and. The turning point is Hyler getting injured and and then heading to the locker room. And I don't know if these two are related or not, but then just starts puking in the locker room. And, you know, a lot of athletes have been in that position, right? You, you start throwing up in, in competition, um, which they showed. I don't know if the two are related, but that ended up being the turning point. And basically from that point forward, they start going on a run. Yep, that, the, him him coming back sort of uh, rejuvenated, if you will, <laughs> from whatever he did in the locker room. Puking uh, rally. He, he, yeah, if you can rally, yeah, a little Billy Bob from a Varsity Blues yeah. action, but he, um, you know, he comes back and, uh, and 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 spurs the team on. But I give that Allen Hancock team credit because there's been a lot of like scouting reports that you've heard of of their opponents uh, before they play them that the coaches will mention, 
And a lot of them are kind of like, let's make this team sound a little bit better than they are so our team doesn't come in and take the team lightly. Yeah. But this Allen Hancock team, everything they said was true. I mean, this team was like, they weren't as big, they weren't as fast, but they were they were tenacious, man. They didn't back down for a second from, from East L.A. Um, in the end, I think East L.A.'s talent won out. But I, I give the Allen Han- Hancock team credit. That, that coach got the most out of those players. He did, he did. And, and they're on the cusp, and that's where we end this episode. We, we stopped midway through this game. As the comeback's happening, right? They're rallying back. They're getting back into this game. They kind of take a lead, but we don't know how it finishes. We've got to wait to the final episode. And I'm ready, Mike, because I want to know, A, if they win this game, do they actually come back and win? I, I get the sense they do, but th- with this team, you just never know. It could go either way. But then also, along with that, is this the final game? Is this going to be all she wrote? Which you kind of get the sense it is because, A, there's one episode left. And there's, you know, either they lose or the season ends, right, with COVID. Yeah, because like, let's put it this way. This this um, Allen Hancock team is so good that, you know, I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because because it, it be- I would believe in a second that they won, but also would believe, you know, it, it, that East L.A. actually comes back, holds on to the lead here. So curious to see what happens in the last episode and how this COVID storyline plays out. That is the big question. So we'll find out on the final episode, which we are going to knock out as soon as um, this episode's done. We get the show watched. We're going to get it up and uh, have these up back to back on the feed and knock that out and move on to another documentary. But it's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward, Mike. Let's figure out how this thing ends. Yeah, let's get to this finale and let's uh, do a little bit. Where are they now? Wherever these guys ended up. And then uh, we'll go from there. Looking forward to it.